that's right, 13th letter to the cipher, coming to you once again during this Black History Month, as promised. Got some good stuff for you. I've been reading material all day, placing numbers, placing history. And this is for my Black family out there and for anybody that's interested in this lesson, I want to thank you all for tuning in and hopefully you all have did that homework that I gave you yesterday. I hope you did and I hope you saw what you needed to see, okay? And to my black family out there, I've been hard on you all and I'm supposed to be hard on you all because we should be responsible to get ourselves out of this condition seeing that no one else is going to help us. Remember that. By the way, I want to get a shout out to the Black Panther Party this month, Black History. And believe it or not, during all of the bad publicity that the Panthers got, God, do you know they never killed one cop? Think about that. Now, let's get to this madness. Now, I don't know where I'm gonna stop. I don't know how I'm gonna put it, but I'm gonna put it the best way I can. I got notes scattered everywhere, but I'm gonna shoot to you from the top of my brain. And if I need to grab some notes, I grab them, but hopefully I won't need any. And hopefully I'm gonna close this out today. So hopefully I will never, ever, ever, ever have to talk about this again, ever. Now, once again, this is Black History Month. And I have been trying, I have been trying to free the slave mentality from black people during this month, especially. However, there seems to be a psychological chain that is upon the mind of black men and women, black men and women here in America. Now, one of our biggest things that we have to overcome besides cigarettes is religion. Now, I need to get down to this religion thing and get it over with. I don't know how long I'm going to go. I don't know, but I'm going to give you what I got. Now, most of my family out there who cannot seem to get over it, who cannot seem to get over it. I've spent numerous and numerous of hours of doing real research to help free your mind from religion it doesn't matter because after what i tell you tonight hopefully hopefully we can do away with this religion thing and you can free your mind from that grip that lock that miseducation let's start off what's the purpose of religion what's the purpose of religion well, you see, well, some people will say religion is something that's supposed to be guiding you back to God. Okay. Okay, that's that's religion. And it's always got something to do with God, right? Okay. Now, whether you are a black Jew want to be black Jew in regards to uh, that book the Torah we're going to get off into the Torah we're going to get off into the Bible we're going to get off into the Quran now I need you to get a pen or a pencil and some paper like for real because we're going to we're going to end this thing okay we're going to end this thing tonight we're going to end it tonight. Now, 
that book that you have um let's start off with we're gonna start off in the middle we'll start off with the with the bible we'll start off in the bible we'll start off with that now that bible the king james version the queen james version because he was a homosexual and that history i get off into a whole nother time hopefully you'll call some clips in my previous videos me talking about the famous queen james but anyway king james got that bible finished in 1611 and i forget he had 60 something scholars uh, making that happen along with what he put in there and all of that good shit as well Okay, but that's 1611. We're going to give a timeline for that right there. 1611. Now, how long ago is that? Exactly my point. Exactly my point. Let's leave that right there, 1611. Now, is that the oldest Bible? Is that the oldest Bible? The oldest Bible is called the Codex Vaticanus. The Codex Vaticanus. That is the oldest Bible. Okay? And that Bible was by a Greek. That's right. And his name is U. Usubius E U B U S E B U I S Usubius in the fourth century. In the fourth century. Okay, that's the oldest Bible, and that Bible is divided into four parts, and you can find it uh, one part at the British Museum another part in Russia, another part in, uh, um, in England. Yes, yes. That's it. That's the oldest Bible. Now, that was translated by Greek from Hebrew because we don't have an old Hebrew Bible that's older than what this guy has presented. And like I said, it's in the British Museum in London, it's in Egypt, it's in uh, um, Germany, and it's in Russia. Now, with that being said, okay, and that's in the fourth century AD, okay? Um, not only that, not only that, did this guy write uh, the oldest Bible, this guy was a bishop and he was supposed to be present at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, but he didn't make it. And what happened at 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea? This is where Constantine was taking books out that did not fit the Christian Christian doctrine. That's right. The Apocrypha. But you can find that Apocrypha in a Roman Catholic Bible. You can find that Apocrypha also in the Codex uh, Vaticanus. Okay? And you can find it other places too, but you can most definitely find it in the Roman Catholic Bible. That's for sure. Now, that's the oldest Bible. I just gave you that Bible, the Roman Catholic Bible, and I gave you this King James Bible, okay? I'm really gonna trip you out about that later on, though. Now, how old is that? Let's just say fourth century AD, okay? Besides your little Bible, that's 1611, okay? Now, prior to that, you had the Ashkenazi Jews. The Ashkenazi Jews came with the Torah in 1312 
BCE, okay? Before the common era, before Christ existed, what have you, okay? In 1312 BC, now this is when Moses had left, was on Mount Sinai and got this from God. Now remember that these, that the Torah consists of five books, okay? That's Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, okay? The same five books in the Bible, 